Hey, Sea Life. First of all, let me just start by saying thank you so much for continuing to meet as a community group. Since our very beginning, we have believed that people grow spiritually when they're connected relationally. And so uh, the effort, the time, the energy that you are putting into gathering with other people is edifying the work of the Spirit in you. So uh, shout out to you for that. Over these last few weeks, we've been in a series called How to Be Rich. And uh, we've just been walking through 1 Timothy chapter 6 uh, where it says this, As for the rich in this present age, in week one, uh, we realize that, you know what, our tendency is to want to kind of check out when we hear as for the rich in this present age. Uh, but whenever you look at the facts, for most people, uh, we are wealthy. We've got extra income. It's not that we're not rich. We're just not very good at being rich. And so uh, we kind of had to get over that hurdle that first week. Week two, uh, we continued in the text, charged them not to be haughty. That means arrogant nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but instead on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. And so that week, what we learned uh, was that our tendency is to allow our hope to migrate over to our wealth, uh, but that's fickle. It's not going to last. It's not stable. Uh, instead, we need to put our hope and our faith in the provider rather than the provision. Who's the provider? Well, God is the provider. He's the one that gives us our work ethic. He's the one that gives us our intelligence, the one that gives us our strength, the ability to do the things that he's called us to do uh, to earn resources. And then uh, last week, we got to the place where it's like, okay, we're not supposed to be arrogant, not supposed to be haughty, not to put our uh, hope on wealth. So what are we supposed to do? Well, as rich people that follow Jesus, we are to do good and to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. And man, wasn't that such a great week? Okay, so this past Sunday, uh, the lesson was on verse 19. And this is one of those that it feels a little mystical, a little bit of a twist in the way we typically think about money and resources. But listen to what the text says. Thus, storing up treasure for themselves. So as a result of... Doing these things, like being generous, ready to share, all those sorts of things. It says we are then storing up treasure for ourselves as a good foundation for the future so that we may take hold of that which is truly life. And so uh, here's where it could get a little bit tricky because, um, at least for me, as I was preparing to teach week four, uh, I kind of wrestled with this idea of, okay, so the way I leverage my resources now is actually, what does it mean storing up treasure for me in heaven? Uh, and so we had to go to what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. He said, uh, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, he said, lay up for yourselves. So there's this reward eternally of some sort. Okay, so we're not earning salvation. That's only through Jesus and faith in Jesus. But once we are saved, the way we live our lives today in the present, the way we handle our resources today in the present is actually uh, kind of paving the way, like it, it, it's setting up what we're going to receive once we get to heaven. Uh, and there's this mindset that once we get to heaven, everybody's going to be equal. Everybody's going to have the same amount of stuff. But that's not what the text teaches. That's not what Jesus teaches. He said, so we should lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust uh, could destroy or where thieves could break in and steal. And he said, because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be also. And so um, I thought some of the things maybe you could talk about as a group would uh, be, first of all, does it, does it kind of rub you a little bit wrong? Is it, does it feel a little bit greasy to, to say, you know what, the way I leverage my money today is actually going to serve me well in heaven? Uh, because again, we, we don't live with a works-based salvation. That's only through faith in Jesus that we're saved. But on the other side of that salvation we're able to earn some kind of credit when we get to heaven. Uh, maybe that's not the best way to say it, but that's the reality of it. And so maybe here's some questions. Was laying up treasures in heaven a new concept for you? And if so, talk about it. How did it make you feel to kind of wrestle with that? If it's not a new concept, uh, then maybe share with your group uh, the way you've been leveraging your resources and I'm not just talking about time resources. I'm talking about actual money resources. How have you been leveraging those money uh, in financial resources to lay up treasures uh, in heaven? Maybe another question that you could talk about as a group is this. Like we have this tendency to really only talk about financial things and financial investments in the temporary sense, right? Like we're trying to collect enough. We're trying to save up enough that it would get us to retirement. So then we could give it to somebody else or whatever. Like, why do we tend to only focus on financials in the temporal when the scripture seems to speak so uh, consistently 
about the fruit of that temporary investment on this side, uh, the fruit of it lasting into eternity. So uh, why do we tend to kind of always sneak back over to the temporal issues? Something else maybe you could talk about, or what are some of the practical, practical things that you could do? Uh, maybe practical things that you actually currently do uh, that leverage your resources, not for temporal gain, not to make sure that the kids and grandkids are taken care of, not, not just so that you can have an amazing retirement. That's awesome. Great for you. Good for you. Go you. Uh, but beyond all of those sorts of things, like what are some practical things uh, that someone could do to leverage resources, here's kind of the twist, for eternal gain, for eternal purposes, uh, for eternal reward? Uh, what, are, what are some ways that you could begin to do that? Share those ideas because it could be you're doing something that could really inspire somebody else uh, to move to the next level as they kind of look at their financial thing. And then maybe the last thing. And uh, as we kind of near the end of this series, we're not quite finished yet, but as we near the end of this series, like why do you think talking about money and financials was so important to Jesus? We've mentioned this a couple of times in the series. Uh, and and I, maybe the big obvious answer is, yeah, because it competes, money competes for our affection and our attention and our allegiance to God. I think that's why Jesus talked about it. But why do you think it was so important that Jesus talked about it so often? Like, why does he consistently bring it up in his teachings? And knowing that he did that then, and we have record of that in the scripture, and we have the Holy Spirit working in us, maybe here's something that you could give as a little bit of a testimony. Maybe it's a little bit of a confession to those that you're meeting with. What is it specifically that God is calling you to through this series of learning how to better steward, better resources, or better resource, better invest the financial resources that he's entrusted you. Like what specifically, if you're at a place where you're ready to share that, um, is he calling you to, stretching you toward, uh, compelling you to do? What adjustments uh, are going to be made in your financials that will help you to not just, ready for this, be rich, but how to be really good as a follower of Jesus at being rich? Awesome. I think that's it. Hope that you have a great conversation with your group.